Hello again. Um, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing my discussions on coronavirus and climate change. So um, I talked about some basically how recently the polar vortex uh, over the Arctic collapsed, as it does, you know, as we move into warmer weather, and the cold air spilled south. So cold, dry air spilled south over Canada, extended far down into the U.S., and uh, unfortunately, the water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, the temperature anomaly is about 2.25 degrees Celsius, when the warmest in other years has been about an anomaly of plus one degrees Celsius. So the Gulf of Mexico is super warm. So the warm, humid air has come up, collided or clashed with the cold air from the Arctic that's escaped because of the polar vortex collapse. And that's created massive storms, and there was a tornado outbreak um, just a few days ago, which I'll I'll discuss um, now. Some of the more some of the details on this this outbreak, as I drink my vitamin water and squeeze my stress ball. And Shackleton uh, couldn't join me, um, but okay. So on my Facebook page. Um, Basically, this is an image that a friend shared, Martin, my friend Martin shared, and this is a, a storm prediction centered storm reports for April 12th of this year. And these are tornado reports in the red, 111. High wind reports are in the blue, 559. Hail reports, 36. Total of 706 reports and high winds are 65 knots and higher and hail is the large hail two inch diameter and greater okay so you can see the outbreak so the cold air came down from the arctic because of the polar vortex collapse and that cold air came down here and the warm air because the gulf of mexico is so warm the warm humid air came up and they clashed and created storms and created tornadoes, high winds, um, and uh, you know, large hail, two inch diameter and larger. So let's have a look at some other things here. This is the temperature anomaly for January, February, March, 2020. And you can see this entire region of five degrees Celsius warmer than normal. You know, I would expect if it was global dimming, Partly it could be related to that, but I would expect more warm, you know, warm warming over, over China where there's much fewer aerosols and more sunlight can get through. Um, but, you know, we'll see how this, this progresses over, over time. Um, this is just a radar image. If you, uh, radar scope is the best image to get weather, to follow weather. Um, I pay about, I think it's about 10 bucks US a year may have gone up and this is just showing some of the, we had snow, we've had some, some snow in Ottawa, you know, and this is like a popcorn, popcorn uh, storm, you know, little, little clusters coming. Um, this is uh, another view of March, 2020, the anomaly relative to 1951 to 1980. Okay, uh, 1.18 degrees warmer is Globally, you can see this big, huge cluster of, you know, over five degree temperature. In this case, in this map, it's showing four to eight point four, so as high as eight point four. You know, over this vast area here, this is just in March. The previous image I showed was January, February, March. You know, remember baseline shifts. If you want this relative to eighteen eighty to nineteen ten, add zero point, um, add zero point three degrees. Yeah, about point, well, point two, point one five, point two, point three, you know, and then if you add, go back to uh, 1750, you add, need to add another point two, another point two, point three, and you can see that this number here, um, you know, as well is, is between 1.5 and 2 degrees if you take it relative to a uh, 1750 baseline. Okay, this is just uh, some of the coronavirus uh, curves. You know, Canada is starting to flatten out. Italy, 
uh, or uh, Australia and New Zealand. This is Aus Australia is this line, New Zealand is this line. This is on a per capita, well, per million inhabitant basis. So, uh, you know, there's lots of data like this. Um, this is some of the tornadoes. These are the radar scope images looking at differential radar. So one color is winds going one way, the other color is winds going another way. So the red is all, reddish shades are all one direction. And so this is the rotation. This is the, this is the storm right here. This is just, so this is Doppler radar image. This is a straight radar image. This is identifying the different types of um, precipitation. And this is uh, another view here. And you can clearly see there's lots of debris and stuff. So massive tornado images. This is the two tornadoes. One was here, one was here, about 38 miles away, and they tracked over, over an enormous distance. Um, stay alert, say, stay safe, stay the F inside. This was an Easter uh, image. Okay, so, so those images were, were there. And uh, okay, so now if I go up, I'm looking at the National Weather Service, Jackson, uh, Mississippi. And this is this image. Okay, I'll get to the, well, this image is basically, it's from satellites, the Sentinel-2. Um, which measures different wavelengths reflected, and it, it creates what is the NDVI, um, which is basically vegetation. It's looking at different types of vegetation. So what happened is this is the, the EF3, the northerly, northerly one coming up here. So it tracked for about, you know, over 80 miles. The EF4 came here, the southerly one, you know, about 38 miles apart you know, lifted and then came back down and tracked up here. And it basically scoured the surface of the earth, the vegetation. So it's clearly seen on the vegetation index. And that was April 12th. Those were, so EF3 and EF4. So if I go to the top and look at some other data here. Okay, so two mile width. These things were huge. Two mile width, the widest tornado ever surveyed was May 31st, 2013, El Reno, Oklahoma at 2.6 miles wide. So, you know, this is a huge width, huge storms. The preliminary pass, the first started, tracked for 68 miles EF4, maximum width of two miles. The second one started, continued for 82 and a half miles EF3, maximum width of one mile. It's really weird that these things were so close together, two strong tornadoes like this so close together, you know, is probably unprecedented. The El Reno was a one in 50 year event. Like I say, you know, it's related to the polar vortex collapse, produce, bringing the cold air down to this region, extremely warm temperature anomalies in the Gulf of Mexico, bringing warm humid air up to this region. The clash created all of these storm systems. Okay, um, I'll just go down. This is actually a hook echo cake. So th this is like the radar signature on radar scope, for example, somebody baked a cake, you know, a weather geek, Katie Nikolai, meteorologist, <laughs> created a year ago, made this hook echo cake for her meteorology professor's birthday, you know. Okay, and I showed you this, the NDVI uh, image. And there's some specifics of the, you know, of the tornado. You know, huge damage, huge um, swaths on the, you know, over the surface. You know, and here, here's the two. This is the one that lifted here, and this is the other one. These are some other, other tracks. I mean, it was, it was, uh, in, you know, a horrible day for, for it. This is a um, radar image ongoing on the Sunday over time and you can see these massive storm fronts you know so you know uh, it's hard to see where, where the you'd have to look at the time when the tornado hit to to find out to see it on on this image but these massive supercell complexes this is the uh tornado outbreak so there were 30 total tornadoes 
8 EF zeros, 9 EF ones, 8 EF twos, and 5 EF threes. So EF three here, um, EF three here. Here, here's the two EF threes. You know that the tracked close together. You know another EF three over. Like it's just you know it's just crazy. And this is very early in the year for this tornado break outbreak. Okay, and there's all kinds of uh, other stuff here. Okay, um, this is my YouTube channel. You can search for things just by go, going here, search, type in the title, and it brings up. I've got, I don't know how many videos, I've lost count, maybe 700 altogether, 15-minute videos over the years on all different topics, so please check it out. Um, now on coronavirus, the latest numbers, you know, we're, we're, we're two, two point, over two million now. Um, U.S. 671,000. You know, if you do, uh, if you look at the ratio of U.S. to total, um, they're about, it's about 31%. Okay. Um, it's generally, it's, it's sort of fluctuating a bit, the percentage, but it is, it is climbing still, um, you know, will it reach 50? You know, that remains to be seen. Will the U.S. cases equal half the cases in the entire world? You know, that remains to be, to be seen. Um, this is a curve. Um, and if you just Google, this is really good data. Google Mark Handley COVID-19 growth rates, and you can get to this site. And you can, you know, look, many, many countries are on there, you know, find your country and you can see for yourself how your, how your country is doing. And there's, it's even broken down to, f to some different regions. Most of these curves are semi-log plot. So that, that makes exponential growth appear as a straight line. So like this curve here, you know, is where a lot of the curves were tracking um, this, which is 35% daily increase. But as social distancing takes effect, et cetera, you know, the, the curves, the, the slopes decrease. So this is an 8% daily increase, which is, um, you know, you can see where, where your country's tracking. Um, where's Canada again? There, this, is, this is Canada. So, so we're tracking probably about the 8% line. The U.S. is the, the yellow line, which disappears up here. You know, the, the purple line was Italy. You know, right now, you know, Italy's flattening. Uh, the U.S. is still going on the about the 8% daily increase curve. This is cumulative. Okay, so you don't expect it. It's not going to drop. They're going to flatten out. The cases will flatten out. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to talk about, you know, this article. Um, in the medium, what makes the novel coronavirus so contagious? Prion-like features may contribute to the transmissibility of COVID-19. Okay, so COVID-19, coronavirus disease 19, that was named by the World Health Organization. Um, the virus itself is SARS coronavirus 2. Um, it's significantly more contagious than the seasonal flu, we know. We thought the R0 was 2.4. Now, you know, it looks like it may be as high as 4.7. So this thing spreads like crazy. But there was a study. Now, a lot of these studies are, um, they're, 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 they're released online um, because, uh, you know, very quickly before they've gone through the whole peer review process, to get information out as quickly as possible. They'll go through the peer review, maybe be some modified, but these are the preliminary papers. So this paper found that the coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2 that's affecting us now, it contains prion-like domains in its receptor binding spike protein. So you know it's a, okay, so these prions make, so, so basically the net result is there's a nearly 20 fold, 20 times increase in affinity for the protein receptor found in the human cells, the ACE2. So this thing, you know, sticks like glue to the human cells, 20 times, 20 times increase over, you know, other, other viruses. Okay, um, so I'll talk about some of the details of, of this because it's, it's an excellent paper. I'll continue. Thanks for listening.